So today I'm going to talk to you about Cherry Eyes. Um, cherry Eyes is just a nickname for what we call the prolapsed gland of the third eyelid. Um, it can occur very rapidly. Um, one day it's the eye is fine or both eyes are fine and the next day it's the gland is protruding. Um, it's actually the nick Nictitating, nictitating, nictitating. And tear glands remove rapidly, causing the gland to protrude. Um, the, just so you know what the nictitating membrane is, it's the inner eyelid that keeps the eye um, moist and protects it against the debris so it produces the tears. Um, so there tends to be breeds that are, and species that are mostly susceptible to cherry eyes. The most common in dogs tend to be the Bulldogs, the Pekingese, the Bloodhounds, St. Bernards, Beagles, Boston Terriers. There's not really a big dog or small dog differentiation. Um, but it's also sometimes seen in cats. It's more prone to dogs, but every once in a while there's a rare occasion that some Burmese cats or Persian cats will have cherry eyes. Um, what causes a cherry eye? The weakened, the weakened or torn tissue of the connecting third layer of the eyelid um, to the globe of the eye allows the tear gland to protrude outwards. And it actually looks like one eye could be looking at you and the other eye could be looking like, as Dr. Gary would say, at the bus stop. <laughs> so, um, you know, it just kind of looks a little funny. It, you can tell that that eye is definitely not normal. You can also see the redness right there and the swollen. Uh, the inflammation from an injury can cause it or stress, shock, or overexcitement. I have a little red lab that is very excited and she actually came up with one just out of the blue. She's only six months old too, so it's no age difference. Um, some believe that genetics is involved due to like certain breeds being able to being prone to it, but that's not really proven. So symptoms of the cherry eye, obviously, as you can tell with the eye, it, the vision of the dog's eye is blocked. So the eye looks a little displaced. You may also see the squinting or pawing at the eyes. And sometimes whenever the eyes are just red, they would even think that it's just allergies. Dogs can have many allergies, so itching out their eyes or the ears, like just the whole head motion, um, they can be dis dis misdiagnosed, sorry, if she's talking. Um, the swelling or redness, also known as conjunctivitis of the eyes. Um, the redness can be caused by other symptoms too. It, you may not see that as the main symptom. It could be caused by something else. Um, you can also see the pus build. So my little red lab, her whole eye right here was covered in pus. She was, very, it was very hard to see out of her eye, I can imagine, because she also had this protrusion going on too. So her whole entire eye was blocked. Um, as you can see, the darkened color right there of the iris, it almost looks black. That's due to like the eye rot. It changes the eye to more of a black or dark color. Um, because that gland is responsible for about 70% of their tear production, you can get dry eyes and excessive drainage. So treatment, what most doctors will ask you to do is try the medications first. They'll, they may give you steroids and ointments to put in your dog's eyes to reduce that swelling, that pain, take the itchiness away. Um, they're also going to put the party hat on, is what we call it, a cone. So, <laughs> to keep them from rubbing their eyes and getting infection and dirt in it. Um, one of the things that they gave us was this medication right here, the neomycin. And it stung, so she was not very happy with it. But it really helped reduce the swelling. So, you could either do, you could try the medication to prevent the swelling, or if that doesn't work, they're gonna ask you to do surgery. And many doctors will do it many different ways. 
right now there's a controversy about whether you just remove that third eye gland, third eyelid, and it's just not there anymore, which, and some of the doctors get very annoyed and mad at those doctors who do that because they feel that it is just taking the problem away and not actually solving it. And that taking it away can actually cause dry eye and you'll have to put drops in their eyes for the rest of their life. Or you can reposition the eyelid and stitch it back into place and it might take a little longer and it could come back again, but they're trying to resolve the issue. And then obviously you'd follow up with pain medication and inflammatory medications and they would be out for about two weeks with the cone and restricted activity, trying to keep them less excited, less, less movement altogether. So when you repair the eye gland, there's an 80% success rate and you're actually going to take this, you're going to pry their eye open and you're going to pull that layer out and stitch it back into place. And since the tear glands are needed for 70% of the tear production in a dog, you, some vets really think this is important and this is the right way to go rather than removing it. This is what they favor most, at least around home. Um, it can cause human or animal contact, you can use animal or human or animal contact lenses. They're actually really cool. They're making horse lenses that are like oh. the size of like a half dollar. Yeah. They're really cool. But um, use that to protect against ulcers because whenever you stitch that gland back in place, it can rub against the cornea and that's whenever you get an ulcer. Remington had an ulcer that was right on the bottom of her eye and you could barely see it, but her left eye was worse than her right eye. So we kind of expected that there was going to be something that went wrong with it. And we used drops and serum from her blood. We spun the serum out and used that. And there was one other medication, but I think it's in here. But there can be complications being that the ulcer can occur or it can protrude again. It's not promising that the problem is fixed forever. And then disposing of the gland, it's what we call the old fashioned treatment. Uh, the gland is removed completely, never to protrude again. However, that's whenever you have the dry eye and you may even have to put drops in for the rest of their eyes so that their eye stays moistened. So this is Remington. She's a six month old lab, red lab. Um, she was diagnosed with cherry eye about two months ago. We use pain and inflammation medications every day, sometimes up to three times a day. Uh, we all took turns in wrestling her and getting her down. But I knew Dr. Acacia Sir and Dr. Cody Inspaw, they both work with me. And Acacia had never prefer performed a surgery before. And it was really cool because I was like, oh sweet. I have this dog issue that I've never seen before and <laughs> you have never performed it. I, saw, I see a teamwork happening mm -hmm. here. And she got all excited and she went and did all of her research for a couple, it was about two weeks, did all of her research and says, okay, I think I can do it. I think I'm gonna tackle it. I said, okay, how do you wanna do the surgery? Do you wanna take it out or do you wanna stitch it back in? And she said, I really feel that stitching it back into place is the correct way to do it. I don't think we should remove it, being that she's only six months old. I said, okay, that is, that is what I wanted to hear. And she said, now if you could get your hands on some contact lenses, that would be awesome. But if not, it's really no big deal. And I said, well, you know what, I'll do my best, but I can't promise anything. And I went in with her with her surgery, and this is what she looked like before her surgery. No, this, this was her, her one right? eye. Is this yes. Yeah, okay. This was her one her. eye, but her other eye, you see how dark it is? It was showing symptoms back and forth. It would sometimes protrude, then it would go back okay. in, and then it would protrude again, and then it would go back in. So it was kind of up and down, but we knew this left eye here was definitely gonna have to have surgery. So I got lucky enough to 
be in with the surgery and I actually helped set her up and everything beforehand and you can see here how she's stitching the sur like stitching the gland back into place with the eyelid and she was really quick about it she was amazing I can't give her enough praise it took her 15 minutes each eye okay. she was done with less than a half an hour we were out of there and she went home a sleepy puppy but <laughs> um, she sometimes had to cut the gland or cut the, like the tissue to make sure that it would fit back into the eye but she did awesome with recovery her eyes were a little red and again we used the blood and this like the blood serum and uh, pain medication to keep that swelling and redness down you can still see right there that her eye was a little red and the poor girl had to get her eye shaved so that's why it's discolored but she is back at it and very very ecstatic to have now, her you eyes did back. both eyes did you say yes okay, okay. we did both eyes as long as you had her there mm -hmm. and the other one was showing some yeah. early signs I figured that if we didn't do it, then we would have to go back. You might be coming back. I like the idea of the serum too, keeping that moist. Yeah. Yeah. Because your own serum, you're not going to react to it.